Le Car by Renault, an excellent example of small car engineering. Its engine and chassis systems help to ensure on-the-road performance that blends fuel economy with reliability. Its body design wraps the driver and passengers in a clean and comfortable environment. This Renault dealership training kit is designed especially for the service technician who has limited experience with Renault cars. It will cover a variety of service tips you'll need to know for working on Le Car. We'll concentrate on the features and procedures that are different than those on domestic vehicles. This is the first training kit, release R80-1 in your dealership film program on Renault products. Others will follow from American Motors Sales Corporation, distributors of AMC Jeep Renault vehicles. We'll emphasize service tips for the engine and chassis systems, but we'll cover six areas in all. General information, the engine, the fuel and exhaust systems, the transmission, the chassis, and the electrical system. Let's begin our discussion with some general information. This includes facts about vehicle identification, service publications, special tools, and the pre-delivery inspection. Accurate vehicle identification is necessary for selecting the correct service publication and the proper replacement parts. This oval plate located on the right side inner fender panel in the engine compartment is the main source for vehicle identification. It lists the model number and the fabrication number as well as the country code and equipment code. Another important identification plate is located near the oval plate. Depending on the model year, it is either diamond-shaped or rectangular. It lists the model number and the serial number. These numbers are also displayed elsewhere, such as on the dashboard and driver's foot post. Regarding service publications, there's a shop manual for each type of Renault vehicle. The MR-177 repair manual is the basic reference for Le Car. Service information bulletins, commonly called IS notes, have been issued to update the manual. In addition, there are periodic technical bulletins and other service publications. The special tools you'll need for working on Le Car are detailed in the MR-177 manual. It has a section that shows each tool and lists its use. The tool numbers are coded to the service area, such as MOT for engine tools and ELE for electrical tools. Our last general service tip involves the pre-delivery inspection. For this, you can use the PDI checklist. It includes checks outside the vehicle, inside the vehicle, inside the engine compartment, on the lift, during a road test, and during final inspection. Now let's take a look at some important service tips for the Le Car engine. These include key facts about the head and block, the cooling system, and engine lubrication. First of all, two basic engines have been used for Le Car models. For the R1228 models, 1976 through 1979, the A10 engine is used. For the R1229 models, introduced in 1980, the 847 engine is used. Both are inline four-cylinder designs with an aluminum cylinder head and a cast iron cylinder block. This table compares the two engines. The 847 engine has a larger bore and greater displacement. Both engines have the same stroke. The 810 engine has one of two different compression ratios, depending upon application. Other differences between the two engines will be pointed out as we go along. The lightweight aluminum cylinder head helps to ensure good fuel economy and heat transfer. But because aluminum is a soft metal, there are three service precautions you should keep in mind. First, you should never attempt to remove the spark plugs until the engine is cooled. Otherwise, you may damage the threads in the spark plug ports. Second, when cleaning the gasket face on the cylinder head, use a stripping compound and a block of wood. Do not use a metal scraper. This would gouge the soft aluminum and ruin the sealing surface. And third, overheating must be avoided. Otherwise, there's a good chance of warping the cylinder head. This could result in a blown head gasket, loss of compression, or coolant leakage into the crankcase. You should check for cylinder head distortion each time you remove the head from the block. The maximum allowable distortion is two thousandths of an inch. If the distortion is greater, the head can be machined as long as the minimum repair height is maintained. Up to twenty thousandths of an inch can be removed if the head has not been machined previously. Refer to the appropriate IS note for the correct minimum repair height. The cast iron cylinder block also calls for some special service precautions. First, the block uses cast iron cylinder liners which are removable. They allow the use of one block casting for various engine designs. The top of the liner protrudes above the block. This is an important dimension called liner protrusion. The bottom of the liner rests on a flange in the block. It is sealed with either a paper gasket or a rubber o-ring gasket. When the cylinder head bolts are tightened, the liner protrusion provides a crush on the gaskets to seal the water jacket around the liners. The seal prevents coolant from entering the crankcase. There are two important considerations about these liners. One, the liner protrusion must be correct to ensure proper sealing, and two, you cannot use a caustic flush to clean the cooling system. This would ruin the liner gaskets as well as damage the aluminum engine components. 
The same precaution applies to the lubrication system as well. The reason is that the camshaft lobes for the Lacar engine rely on an oil bath for lubrication. This oil bath will not fully drain. Another feature of the camshaft is that its pulley is used to drive such accessories as the alternator, power steering pump, and air conditioning compressor. That's why proper belt tension and alignment are very important. If the belts are too tight or misaligned, the cam bearings may be damaged. In the lower end of the block, you will check for proper bearing clearance and crankshaft wear as always. However, replacement rod and main bearings are available in only two sizes, standard and ten thousandths undersize. These bearings are marked for easy identification. Other service tips for the head and block involve cylinder head removal, liner protrusion measurements, liner replacement, and the Renault warranty policy for head bolt torque and valve adjustments. For cylinder head removal, there are two key steps. First, always remove the valve drain tension. This is done by removing the rocker arm shaft assembly and the push rods. Second, the cylinder head should be sheared rather than lifted to prevent damage to the liner seals. This is done by removing the cylinder head bolts except for the center bolt on the distributor side. The center bolt is loosened only one-fourth to one-half turn, and then the cylinder head is rotated on the block. If the head is lifted rather than sheared, the head gasket may stick to the liners and disturb the liner seals. This would damage the gaskets and allow coolant into the crankcase. Once the head is removed, you should check it for warping or distortion. You can also check the valve guides for wear. The valve guides are replaceable. Two repair sizes are available, marked with one groove or two grooves for easy identification. Next, you should always check the liner protrusion whenever the head is removed from the block. This check is made using Renault special tools, and the procedure is detailed in the shop manual and the IS notes. The 810 engine uses paper gaskets, which seal as well as act as shims to help set proper liner protrusion. Three thicknesses are available to adjust liner protrusion. The 847 engine uses rubber O-ring gaskets, which ensure sealing only. The liner protrusion depends only upon the manufactured dimensions of the liners and blocks. With either type of gasket, if the liner protrusion is out of spec, and in the case of paper gaskets cannot be corrected, the liner should be replaced. They are available in a matched set of four with matched pistons, rings, and wrist pins. The rings are available separately as well. One more thing you should remember is the Renault warranty policy for head bolt torque and valve adjustments. The head bolt torque and valve clearances must be checked and adjusted during the pre-delivery inspection, during any cylinder head R&R, &R, 300 to 600 miles after any cylinder head R&R, &R, and as required in the maintenance guide. There are some important service tips about the Lacar cooling system also. The system's components include the heater core, water pump, thermostat, radiator, and expansion bottle. The cooling fan for this system is not engine-driven. Instead, it is part of an electrical circuit which includes the fan switch, the battery, a relay, and an electric motor. When the coolant temperature is high, the fan switch energizes the relay which turns on the motor. As such, the fan can come on even when the engine is not running. You should take the proper precautions when servicing a warm engine. The cooling system capacity is 6.5 U.S. quarts, and the coolant mixture is 50-50, 50% -50, 50 antifreeze and 50% water. But because of the aluminum head, you must use distilled water. Ordinary tap water with its chemicals and minerals will corrode the head. The heater core and the engine block in this closed cooling system are both higher than the radiator. As such, the system will not self-bleed when filled. This is why the system is fitted with two bleed screws. When filling and bleeding the system, there is a specific procedure which must be followed. This procedure is detailed in the shop manual. If the bleeding procedure is not followed, air may be trapped in the heater core. This would prevent proper heater operation. A more serious problem, though, would be air trapped in the block. This would prevent proper coolant circulation and result in engine overheating and damage. The lubrication system for this engine is similar to that of other engines. The rocker arms are lubricated by oil from the main gallery, which enters the rocker arm shaft through the number one support bearing. The oil capacity of this system is three and a half quarts with the oil filter and three and a quarter quarts without the filter. Various oil viscosities are recommended depending on the climate in which the car is driven. That ends our discussion about the Lacar engine. To review, here are a few of the more important service tips that you should remember. For the aluminum cylinder head, you should shear the head before removal to prevent damage to the liner seals. You should only use a wood scraper to clean the gasket face. You should check for head distortion whenever the head is removed from the block. And you should follow the Renault warranty policy for head bolt torque and valve adjustments. 
For the cast iron cylinder block, you should check the liner protrusion whenever the head is removed from the block. You should not use a caustic flush in the cooling system, nor an engine flush in the lubrication system. You should check for proper belt tension and alignment on the camshaft, and you should not grind the crankshaft journals more than ten thousandths. And last, when working on the Lacar cooling system, you should remember that the electric fan is not engine driven. It can come on even with the engine not running. You should use only distilled water in the cooling mixture. And after filling, you must bleed the system to remove air trapped in either the heater core or the engine block. Now let's take a brief look at Lacar's fuel and exhaust systems. Key facts here involve the carburetor and emission controls. The carburetor is a typical two-barrel design. Its base is heated by engine coolant, and the choke system is manually operated. The California version is outfitted with a fuel feedback system. The checks and adjustments on Lacar carburetors are similar to those for other carbureted fuel systems. However, an electric idle jet solenoid controls the idle circuit fuel delivery. To check solenoid operation, idle the engine and disconnect the current feed plug. The engine should stop. If it doesn't, replace the solenoid. The Lacar emission controls involve eight distinct systems. These include air injection, accelerated idle, exhaust gas recirculation, vacuum advance, crankcase ventilation, preheated air, fuel evaporative control, and catalytic converter. For servicing these systems, you'll need to refer to the shop manual as well as the appropriate IS notes for the correct year and model of Lacar. These systems have changed almost annually. The 1980 systems will be the subject of your next training release, R80-2, 1980 Lacar Emission Controls. One of Lacar's unique features is its transmission. It's called a transaxle, which is a transmission and axle differential in one unit. The axle half shafts for the front wheel drive system are connected to the transaxle, which is positioned lengthwise as opposed to the cross-mounted engine axle assemblies in some other front wheel drive cars. The basic unit involves a clutch and manual transaxle. Now let's talk about some service tips on the Lacar chassis systems. These include key facts about steering, suspension, axles, and brakes. The Lacar steering is a rack and pinion type. The important thing to remember here is that the height of the steering rack or box is critical. It has a definite effect on the steering arm movement during suspension travel. Unless the box height is correct, steering and alignment problems will result. The steering box height is factory set with shims. Different size shims are used for adjusting the height. If the box is ever removed, mark the shims so that they are reinstalled in their original positions. Regarding suspension, the Lacar has an independent four-wheel torsion bar suspension, often described as one of the best small car suspensions available. All four wheels are fitted with double-acting hydraulic telescoping shock absorbers. The torsion bars may be adjusted to maintain the ride height within specifications. This ride height must be correct before the alignment angles are checked and adjusted. If the ride height is not correct, steering and alignment problems will result. The ride height is checked by measuring the distance between the underbody side member and the ground. This distance is subtracted from the height of the wheel center to the ground. The difference should be within specifications as noted in the Lacar service manual. The ride height is adjusted by rotating the torsion bars. Because of suspension component changes, the alignment specifications are different for early and late model Lacars. Caster angles are adjustable by adding or removing shims on the lower control arm. Camber angles are not adjustable. For early models, toe adjustments are made at the steering rack end fitting. For later models, toe adjustments are made by rotating a sleeve on the tie rod. As mentioned earlier, the front wheel drive Lacar uses half shafts for the driving axle. These half shafts have constant velocity joints at both ends. The inner ends of the half shafts are fitted at the transaxle into splined gears, and the outer ends are inserted into splined hub assemblies. Several different designs of inner and outer joints have been used. The basic difference between the two most common designs is the outer joint. On one, the joint is replaceable, while on the other it is not. If the outer joint is damaged or worn out on that design, the axle shaft assembly must be replaced. The joints on the half shafts are protected by rubber boots. These boots should be inspected each time you service the car. Wipe the boots off and check for tears or signs of leakage from the joint. If the boot is damaged, it should be replaced to prevent joint failure. Our last stop in the chassis is at the brakes. The car has disc brakes up front, drum brakes at the rear, a master cylinder, and a height-sensitive brake limiter valve. When replacing the front brake pads, they should be replaced as a set on both wheels. 
The removal and replacement procedure is detailed in the shop manual and in IS Note 11E. As with other disc brakes, you should check for excessive rotor wear and run out. Disc wear should not exceed 20 thousandths, and run out should not exceed 4 thousandths. However, unlike other discs, the Lacar discs cannot be reground. The disc must be replaced if it shows excessive or uneven wear. The rear drum brakes on Lacar are not self-adjusting. There is one adjuster per shoe. Each must be manually adjusted at specified intervals of about 6,000 miles. Probably the most important service tip about the braking system involves the brake limiter valve. This valve distributes the braking pressure to the rear wheels according to the car's height. It must be checked and adjusted any time there has been a change in the normal ride height. The limiter must be checked and adjusted only with a vehicle resting on the ground, its fuel tank full and a driver in position. The valve operation is then checked using a pressure gauge in place of one of the rear wheel cylinder bleed screws. The cutoff pressure must be as specified in the shop manual. The valve can be adjusted to the proper cutoff pressure by turning a nut on an adjustment rod. When bleeding the system, this valve must be open. That ends our discussion about the Lacar chassis systems. To review, here are a few of the more important service tips that you should remember. To avoid steering and alignment problems, you should check for proper steering box height and proper ride height. Steering box height is adjusted using shims. Ride height is adjusted by rotating the torsion bars. Caster angles are adjustable, while camber angles are not. Toe adjustments are different for early and late model vehicles, as are the alignment specifications. For the axles, you should always inspect the protective boots on the half shaft joints. The inner joint is replaceable, as is the outer joint on certain types of axles. For the brakes, you should keep in mind that the front discs cannot be reground, that the rear drums must be manually adjusted, and that the brake limiter valve must be checked and adjusted any time there has been a change in normal ride height. That brings us to our final area of discussion, the electrical system. The service tips here involve the ignition system and the wiring diagrams. Starting with 1980 models, Le Car is equipped with a breakerless electronic ignition similar to that found on many domestic vehicles. Prior to 1980, a conventional point condenser system was used. You'll find the Le Car wiring diagram to be a very useful tool in your electrical diagnosis work. Like many other wiring diagrams you've seen, the components are located on a map grid which is coded with numbers at the top and bottom and with letters at the sides. However, unlike some diagrams, all components are drawn with standard electrical symbols, and the car's entire electrical system is one diagram. You can easily trace a circuit to identify possible causes of problems. On the back of the wiring diagram is even more information to help you. The component parts index gives you the symbol codes and grid location to help you find any component. The components are listed alphabetically or within groups such as lamps. Another section on the back details the lug terminals, harness assemblies, and wire color codes. And the rest of the back shows you all of the disconnects used in Lacar's electrical system. All are keyed into the wiring diagram and detailed as to plugs, jacks, and location on the car. With that, our discussion is complete. We've covered the service tips that you'll need to know for working on Lacar. All of these service tips are outlined in your reference book for this film. The book should prove especially useful to the technician with limited experience on Renault vehicles. You're encouraged to view this film a second time to pick up the points you may have missed along the way. Also, you may want to use the film to add some notes to your reference book.